Hello, this is Jeff Bagwell with Rural Metro Fire in Knox County, Tennessee. Today we're at Station 34 in Gibbs, out in the Gibbs community, which is uh, kind of like Northeast Knox County. We're going to actually show you the tools and equipment that's on the fire truck behind me. Okay, so obviously the first things first, we have a lime green fire truck because our color, as we've done in previous videos, is lime green with a blue stripe. That's the AMR colors. So obviously we've got the truck. Okay, cab of the truck, we're not going to talk about a lot about the, the cab, but in the cab are the breathing apparatus that the firefighters wear when they go into a burning building. So obviously they have those in the cab so they can be dressing and putting those air packs on when they go down the road. Okay, now obviously the firemen cannot violate state laws. So our state in Tennessee requires that everybody in a moving vehicle be in a seatbelt. I hope you're wearing a seatbelt when you're riding around in your car out on the road as well. So they also have to be in a seatbelt. These air packs are also all designed to where you can put the air pack on with the seatbelt and then pull a pin and that releases the air pack when they get to the scene they can get out. Okay, so let's start down through the truck. We always start on the, on the driver's side of the truck. Okay, we come down the way, obviously we have the pump area. These are what we call crossways, okay, which are nothing more than hose loads preloaded into a lay or a tray. The fireman can come up very easily. It's down low so they don't have to climb, risking back injuries. They can pull those off very easily. Up above, you see we have more hose, and then we have some cribbing tools over on the far left. Okay, and that is nothing more than if we have a car wreck where we have a car on the side, uh, something where we need to stabilize something above us. We have long cribbing for that or pieces of wood. All right, let's open up this compartment. The pump panel. This is where the pump operator or the engineer will stand. They'll control all the pressures on all the hose. Being a pump operator or being a driver, a lot of people think that we're just fire truck drivers. The driver is actually the operator because the operator runs the truck. They're the one responsible for all the equipment. They're the ones that are responsible that everything's operational on that truck. So he has to figure out, I've got two firemen on the end of a hose line. How much pressure can they adequately handle? And how much water does it actually need to combat the fire, whatever size fire they're doing? Okay, so he can sit here at the pump panel and he can adjust the pressures up and down. He can open and close lines as he needs to. He also has a tool here that's called a spanner wrench so that he can uh, open and, or uh, he can, I'm not starting over. He can, he can uh, disconnect and connect different sizes of hoses using the spanner wrenches. Now down at the bottom, we have a little thing called a torch. Now, what do you think we'd use this for? Hmm. In the winter time, when couplings or hydrants get cold and they freeze up, we can use this little baby to heat it up and to actually warm it up to where we can loosen the couplings to get the cap off a hydrant or to loosen up the couplings on the truck or on a hose. Okay, so obviously that pump operator has to have that on every truck, especially in the wintertime. So later on in the compartment, just more stuff. Now this is the operator's equipment. So we're gonna pull that off so we can see. Okay, buckets of foam, because on some fires you need foam. A class B fire, such as a flammable liquid fire, you'll need foam for that. Short section of hose to fill the truck if we need to, pulling up to a hydrant. And then here's something interesting. We have a different size hydrant wrench. It's called a gooseneck hydrant wrench. A lot of people don't have these. This is where the, the hydrant wrench fits out on top of the, uh, the nut, if you will, on the top of the hydrant, and it turns. It's a safety factor, so people can't just come up and put a, uh, uh, a crescent wrench on top of a hydrant and open and close it. Okay, it's a pretty neat device, and we're probably one of the few departments that may use these. We're certainly one of the few in Knox County. All right, so let's go on down. In this compartment, tools. We carry enough tools, we can absolutely destroy things. That's the fun part about our job, okay? We've got bolt cutters to break, to cut open locks or to cut chains. We've got axes. We've got a short pike pole that we can use to pull sheetrock inside of a, of a house, as well as a forcible entry tool over here on the left wall. All kinds of things, okay? 
These little compartments here are nothing but air bottles. Because every air tank that the firefighters have, there has to be a spare bottle. This is not, remember when to, in a previous video we talked about, this is not oxygen, this is just breathing air. It's compressed air pushed in with the compressor into the bottle so that we can use that later on. That's all it is. We carry eight of these in our, on our truck. All right, so we'll come on down to the back compartment. Obviously, for all of our gas power tools, we have to have gas. Okay, we have a big can and a little can. The big can represents straight gas. The little can represents mixed fuel. Because chainsaws like we have, fans, they, ca they take mixed fuel. Okay? Down below, we have standard fire extinguishers, kitty litter, or oil dryers, it's called. Okay, see if you can get a shot of that. Okay, and we use that when we go on a car accident to put down on the roadway so we eliminate that hazard of it being slick or hazardous to motorists or, or people, potentially pedestrians. Then we have a fan. Now, this fan is pretty simple. A lot of people think we're crazy because we put fresh air into a fire. Three things that a fire has to have. Uh, they have to have, it has to have fuel, heat, and oxygen. Well, if, it kind of doesn't make sense that we're putting fresh oxygen into a fire, but we do that because we make a vent on the other side of the fire and we blow the fire toward that vent. We clear out all the unclean air or the contaminated air and our firemen can essentially walk right in and put a fire out with less water that reduces the amount of water damage and fire damage to a person's structure. So we carry that with us and we use it a lot. Okay, up here we've got a chainsaw, bar oil, because if your dad's got a chainsaw at home, your mom or dad, they, they obviously have to have bar oil to put in it. Okay, let's move on around. The back of the truck's always real interesting. Okay, because the back of the truck, the, oh, come this way. The back of the truck, is, uh, is to a point to where everything comes off of the back, okay? So in one compartment on this side, we'll have, guess what, fire trucks carrying, have you guessed? Ladders, okay? Different size ladders. We'll have a, what we call a 14 foot uh, roof ladder with hooks on it that hooks over the peak of the roof. That way the fireman can climb on the roof and it makes it much more stable. Then the other ladder in there is a 24 foot extension ladder to where we can reach some of these high points on a person's roof. Because firemen typically have to get on a roof. They don't want to, but we have to sometimes. Okay, and they're all protected, slid into a compartment, nice and simple. This compartment has a booster reel. Okay, so a lot of fires will require just a little hose, bigger than a garden hose maybe, but not quite to the size of a full attack hose. So we have a booster reel, reel that we can pull off. Very, very simple in design. Now up here on the top of the truck, this hose, let me see if I can get this a little bit. Here. Hose, lots of it, okay? Two kinds of hose. The yellow hose is what we call supply hose. That's the hose we lay in from a hydrant. And the white hose to the right is what we use as a supply hose for a deck gun or a ground monitor. Should we have a big fire that needs lots of big water, okay? This is what we call a humat valve. The benefit of this, this baby is that we can put this on the hydrant. And if the hydrant is a weak hydrant or not a very good one to the point that we can't get a whole lot of water out of it, the first engine will hook this to the hydrant. The second engine will pump the plug, as we call it. Basically, that just means we're boosting the pressure that comes out of that hydrant. And then we have a ladder to where we can get up to the top of the truck because we need to load hose occasionally. We've got to have a ladder, right? So we'll come on around. Now, this compartment has got rescue tools on it because fire departments respond to a whole lot more than just fires. We go to medical calls when people have heart attacks. We also go to car accidents. And then we also go, obviously go to fires, okay? So this compartment is tray. 
has got what is predominantly called the Jaws of Life. Okay? Uh, that, that nickname came from Hearst, a specific manufacturer. But typically, that, that nickname has stuck with these tools forever. So a lot of people will say, get out the Jaws of Life, get out the Jaws of Life, and that's what we have. Then we also have three other tools here. We have a cutter, which can cut uh, parts of the car away from the person. Then we have rams that can push things away. In a car accident, you have to realize things get compacted and pushed in on a patient. What we want to do with these tools is not pull the patient out, but we want to actually take the car away from the patient so that we don't have, um, we don't have more intrusion, potentially more injuries to the patient, okay? All right, so we got two more compartments here where air bottles are. Remember these from the other side? Same thing, no different. This one, though, has, guess what? A fire extinguisher. Let's pull this thing out. This is nothing more than a water, pressurized water extinguisher. You pull the trigger, you get, guess what? Water. A little bit of a pressure. Those are good for forest fires, for small, incipient phase fires that we can put out real quickly. Okay? Let's see what we got in this compartment. Okay, this compartment has got some fun things. This compartment has got nothing but more rescue tools, battery power tools, okay? So we have a Sawzall, nice battery pack on the bottom. Basically the same thing that you may have at home, that your parents may have. Uh, don't use these tools without parental permission if you're at home, okay? But we have these things and they're all tucked away in a little pocket for them. It's got spare blades, got a chainsaw, all kinds of things that the guys may need to actually work a call. Okay, or a car accident. All right, and then the last compartment we'll get to. Remember I said we go to more stuff than just car wrecks. We go to more stuff than just fires. We go to medical calls. So therefore we have all kinds of medical equipment. And then we'll have to get into medical equipment on another video, but we carry the paramedic on the truck has a heart monitor. Okay, just like they have on an ambulance, no difference. Gotta remember, the only difference between the paramedics on the fire engine and the paramedics on the ambulance is the paramedics on the fire trucks cannot transport people. It's the only difference. Everything else they can do. You have a heart attack, they can help minimize that damage, minimize the heart muscle that may die before the ambulance gets there. Therefore, increasing the chances that patient has a very positive outcome as we move forward into life. We have oxygen. Now remember, we talked, about, we talked about the tanks on the other side that were compressed air. This is actual oxygen. How do we know? It has a green top, first of all. It's a smaller cylinder. Clearly, we cannot put this into our breathing apparatus. Okay? We have a suction machine. Okay, where we can actually clear someone's airway should they need it. Um, these kind of things are good for patients in cardiac arrest for patients and other kinds of medical issues that we won't get into a lot of, okay? All kinds of other things. We'll have to have a whole nother class on medical equipment. But, uh, but anyway, I hope this has been educational. I hope it's been informative for you. If you have other questions about equipment or operational things that the Rural Metro Fire Department does here in Knox County, we hope that you'll let us know. Hopefully we can do another video, post it, kind of answer some of those questions. Thank you very much for watching.